All right, so we're going to be looking at misleading charts and graphs. So whenever you think about the word misleading, it's leading you in the wrong direction. Yes? But, oh, thanks. Believe it or not, lots of companies do this. They kind of make their graphs that they're showing you lie a little bit so that they can make it say what they want it to say. So they skew that information to kind of twist it and make it look like what they're wanting you to believe. They use the same numbers, they use the same stuff, but it looks a little different than it should. So when you talk about what makes a graph misleading, how could they change it to make it accurate? and why somebody would want to make this particular graph look differently than what they're trying to tell. Okay, so let's read this. Kind of a long story and it's kind of depressing, so sorry. Um, in February of 1990, at the age of 26, Terry Schiavo collapsed at home and her oxygen was cut off to her brain for several minutes. Um, they don't know why she collapsed, but her husband says that it was a heart attack. Um, they suspect, some people suspect, that he tried to strangle her. Um, no one was aware that she had an eating disorder. She was very conscientious of her weight, of her weight and her, her husband put pressure on her to stay thin. Um, he says that he's never said all of these things, but even though she is really badly brain damaged, she breathes and maintains a heartbeat and blood pressure on her own. Um, she can see and move her limbs, but she needs a feeding tube to help her eat. Um, her husband went to court to get permission to remove the feeding tube, basically so that she would end up dying. So he says, let her die, basically. So we're looking at this particular bar graph, and they're showing us, question, um, based on what you've read or heard about the case, do you agree with the court's decision to have the feeding tube removed? So he went to court and said, I think I should be able to remove her feeding tube, and the court agreed with him. So looking at the Democrats, the Republicans, and the Independents, it looks like the Democrats are very much in favor of the court saying that he could remove the feeding tube from his wife. And the Republicans and the Independents really don't agree with this. Anybody got an idea of how this could be a misleading graph? How does this kind of, I mean, it tells the numbers and it shows exactly what it's supposed to, but you look at it and you're like, oh, I mean, I don't know. Ruby. Because 54 and 62 are actually pretty close to each other. So they made the graph start at 53, so it would seem like that they were at four. Okay, so Ruby said 62 and 54 are really actually pretty close numbers out of 100 because you're looking at 62% to 62% out of 100 degree, 54% out of 100 degree. And she was like, you know, 54% and 62% are really not that different. If you make that on a test, you've got a couple more questions, right? So there's not that much of a difference, but they're making it look like, whoa, this is insane. So many Democrats agree, but nobody else agrees. And the Democrats are like, all for it. Look, their green goes all the way up the chart. But then these people, their green is barely on the chart at all. So who probably made this graph? The Democrats. Somebody that was maybe a Democrat, okay? Or could it, better, could it have been a Republican that made this? and said, look at how horrible these Democrats are. They all agree with this, and it's just wrong. Mm -hmm. It could have been, okay? What can we do to make this a better graph? Pen. Make it out of 100. Okay, make it out of 100. Start with zero, go to 100. What else could we do? <coughs> Count by fives. That would make it look a little different. Okay, so how does starting at 53 change our view of this graph? Like Cannon said, make it go to 100, Margaret. If you start it with like 50 or something, then instead of starting with the number of below it, um, it shows. Okay, so if I start with 50 or 20, whatever we're doing, bar graphs, we always going to start with zero. That's always going to show the best, most accurate view. 
So if we started with zero and went up to 100, there's 100%. Or even if we stopped at 63%, but we started at zero, these numbers would come down. These would be smaller. My interval would not be an interval of one. I would be having an interval of maybe five or 10. And that would make those look a lot more similar. Here's the same exact information, same exact numbers, but someone different made this graph. It's not really Do you see how it's the exact same information? 62, 54, 54. 62, 54, 54. It's the same exact information, but doesn't it look a little different? Yeah. No. It looks like everybody is about the same with them agreeing with this. This makes it look completely different. So see how they can skew this and make their graphs to make you want to believe certain things. So same graph, but like we said earlier, it starts at zero. And look how different that is when we started at zero. They look very similar. Okay, both of these graphs show the exact same data. The graph on the left looks very different than the graph on the right. Exact same numbers. What's the difference? Is that two thousand seven? Is that two thousand eight? Grace. On the left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So starts at 80, 81. This one starts at zero. It just like blows my mind whenever I look at these. What are people telling me that I believe? Man, it's really not that bad. Oh my gosh, what else is out there? It's like people are faking me out. I don't know what to believe. It's like the same conspiracy theory. Man, they did talk to me, but I'm thinking of something else. It looks like um, 2008 was a lot, lot cooler. Feel clean. What about this one? The length of remarks of the Republican and Democratic National Conventions. So these are the people that spoke at different national conventions and how many words they used. So 2,000 words, 3,000 words, 4,000, so on. What is this graph telling you? How many words they spoke? Who talks that all of them. Who talks way more than everybody else? He is a motor mouth. I can't stand him. He just talks and laughs and blah, 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 blah. And I want to go home. I have to listen to him. But could it look a little different? Yes. If it was counting by 10,000s, perfect. If it was counting by 10,000s, they would all be right there together. Um, could I make it look like he talks even more than that graph makes it look like? Yeah. Yeah. What would I do now? I would use my interval of 500, then he would be like double everybody else. Okay, so I can change that information to make it look how I want it to look. Do I want Bill Clinton to look like a blabbermouth and he won't shut up and he won't let people go home? Yes. Or do I want him to look, he's about like everybody else, okay? It depends on who I am and what I'm wanting the result to be. Um, let's skip this one. Okay, so here's one that talks about average viewers. So these are different news stations, news channels, and they're telling us how many average viewers each of these people have. Everybody likes Bill O'Reilly. People are watching Bill O'Reilly. Who maybe made this graph? Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. Okay. What if we did this graph and we did an animals of 50? Who would look even better? Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly would look even better. Um, who would probably want to do this graph and maybe do it in intervals of 200 or 500? They would just do <laughs> These people right here. Because they look really bad right now. Okay. And if I did it in animals of 50, they're going to look even worse. So why are they looking at Bill O'Reilly more than But wouldn't they look a little better if I made it in intervals of 200 yes. or 500? Because then they wouldn't be so far apart from everything else. Um, we will finish this one up tomorrow.
Let's chat about homework real quick.